Streets 945 ATL. What's poppin'? This is Dre Taylor. And here with me in the studio today, we got some special guests. They just dropped a mixtape, Blood Brothers 2. We got Rue Gay, Yolo and Coon. What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What up? What up? Okay, so what's up with this Blood Brothers 2 mixtape? Go ahead and give me the tea on it. Um... It, it's it's the sequel to, uh, to to the it's the sequel to the first mixtape we did Blood Brothers One. Um, this it's it's going crazy right now. It's all over all streaming sites. Um, uh, Scream and and Swamp Pizzo on that joint right there. And um, the T behind it is you just need to go check that thing out. Like it's a lot of it's a different sound. You know what I mean? It's not what you're used to hearing. So we kind of got our own unique sound. Different so sound. What you mean by different? Not, not from what you different cadence. You know, okay. you know how the music is right now. Yeah, and, you know, like it's kind of, singing. Yeah, yeah, type. yeah. They, yeah. And, and it's and it's not really hip hop. you not not saying that it ain't, but to me, it, it's really not. You know okay. what I mean? And coming from where we from, we from Trinidad and Tobago, by the way. All and right. we had to be kind of taught English. So being taught English, we was taught how to rap. We don't rap in fragments. We don't rap with incomplete sentences. Like you know what I mean? We actually yeah. put words together and sit down and. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you it, was really putting words together because you went to college with a scholarship, right? Yeah, okay. I went to I went to college. I uh, lost my scholarship, but I had a football scholarship. Uh, middle linebacker. Um, oh yeah, I can tell. So um, yeah, so that's that's basically about it. So as far as like the way we 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 rap, it's not gonna be like everybody else right now. And the only way for me to really explain it to you is for you to check it out. Then you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. You see what I'm saying? Cool. What you got to say about this? Hey, what was your favorite part about doing Blood Brothers Two? Favorite part, probably just, you know, getting it out, finishing up, getting it out in the streets, you know what I mean? Now we just got to push it, so we just need everybody to go get it, go check it out. What was the hardest song to make on the, on the tape? Like, just, just dealt with all the issues and just gave you the most problems? I would say, I would say Talk Snow White. Mic. Talk to the mic. Yeah, I would say Snow White was the kind of the toughest one for me, um, as far as like, cause you it, it's a yeah, it was a different type of cadence that we was on. You got to try like hold a note on that thing a little bit. Oh, okay, I, you're I, not really a singer. Yeah, so I, th- I would say Snow White for me. I don't know much about Coon. It's really kind of easy for Bruh, so I don't know. He could tell you. I'll probably say the same thing. I'll yeah, go along with Snow White. Like I said. It's- Cause Coon a little bit different though. When yeah. when he when he doing his like, if I finish a song, it might take Coon two weeks to bring me his verse. Yeah. But his verse is gonna be ready, so it's not gonna be a a problem when he gets in the studio to do okay. it. But cause you know, he write with a dictionary and the source and all that shit. So by the time he he bring your verse, I don't know if he had problems with it. I don't know cause it's it's ready, it's done, it's full through. So I don't know. So what's it like just working side by side by your brother every day, especially with the situation y'all been through, you was locked up, cool, right. and y'all like stay real tough. Like, it seemed like y'all relationship got stronger, no? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I was away for a little bit. You know, bro held it down. You know, he kept the music thing going. See, but- it really, it really kind of started with the fact of when I was still playing football at the time. Yeah, he was doing the music. I wasn't chasing the music too much because I was on the football field. Yeah. So at the end of the day, when I, I I lost my scholarship around the time he got arrested to go do his time. Mm-hmm. Now I was just a freestyler. Now, he just played beats. I freestyle. Come on, freestyle yeah, with me, Yolo. You know what I mean? I so freestyle. after that, when he <laughs> got locked up, I felt like, you know what I mean? Because I used to see him. We had a garage, and rain, sleet, snow didn't matter. He was outside recording putting tracks down and everything. He was on house arrest, so he really couldn't do too much. Right. But at the end of the day, he, he was still, still putting in enough. the work. You know right. what I mean? Right. So what I did was I started, before I even put anything on wax, I was running around like him. So I was putting his songs out, going and performing, and rapping his lyrics and doing his stuff for him. And then one day I ended up winning our visit, and I said, look, man, I'm going to take, I'm going to go ahead and push this shit over the edge. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he was like, okay, cool. So after that, I started getting in the studio. I started putting stuff down. By the time he came home, it was already locked in. Already locked in, yeah. and I mixed my own stuff, own beats, you taught all that, how to do e- all that, everything. Yeah, because the co- the cost benefit analysis that's too much. Like, it so at the lot. end of the day, you got to try to save some type of way to keep stuff in house. Yeah. So I learned how to mix everything, and, and 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 so we do our stuff. He could take as much time as he want in there to get his stuff together. Ain't no rush. Ain't none of that going on. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean. At, at, when when we did that, we dropped the tape. Mm-hmm. Um, 
everybody was kind of familiar with me because I started going a little bit hard. That wasn't too all the way un- until he came, and then we right. did Meet the Plug. Yeah, that was the first and song the we dropped up. together. That was on Blood Brothers One. That's that's them screaming on favorite joint on Blood Brothers One, yeah. and that's how from then on we like night and day. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of sense that. Yeah, we like night and day. He's more like more secretive reserve, and dark shy, and reserved. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because he, you know, and me on the other hand, I know somebody got to do the talking. We both can't be in here quiet. You know yeah, what I mean? That's, no, it's cool. It's cool. That don't mean you don't have nothing to say just because you're quiet. You know, you just. Some of the things that you've been through, you just kind of sit back and observe yeah, and observe, look at you. Observe, you know what observe. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's it, and it's got to be cool too. Like, um, he held it down while you was locked up, so it's like nobody like your brother. I think it's the perfect name for a mixtape for a, a, a sequel, Blood Brothers Two. You yeah. know, like nobody got you like your brother. Yeah, your real brother. Your not, real one. Not yeah. no pretend. Not <laughs> right, no fake. Right, right. Came across the water with him. So right, right. At the end of the day, like that's why don't nobody got me like him. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I could have a million homeboys and a million friends, but don't nobody got me like him. Exactly. So everybody wants to rap, everybody, but the trust and the loyalty, I put him over anybody else. That's you see thing. what I'm saying? So we like, okay, let's go ahead and do it. You know what I mean? If I'm having a problem with some, he'll come and push me. Like, look, dog, you got to go ahead and get this on out. We need to go ahead and get this out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when we, with our recordings, like, the stuff was already done. When we dropped Blood Brothers One, Two was already ready. Yeah. Oh, okay. You, you had it tucked away. Yeah, like, we got. Yeah. They, so they, how many songs like y'all got just recorded, just stashed away? Oh, it's a lot of those. Like yeah. maybe oh, like a thousand yeah. songs. A thousand. Oh, maybe yeah. like a thousand songs. You can look at me dead in my eyes. Uh, maybe like a thousand, thousand songs. songs. Yeah. That's I, and that, and that's low balling. Yeah. I, that's like a thousand that I'd be like, here, it's ready to go. Yeah, it's yeah. more than that, of course, but. Yeah, yeah. As far as like, hey, I could throw out there maybe like a thousand songs. That's what's up. And but you know, music is timeless. Some stuff people hear, we bend it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's just now is the time it comes out. You can rock with it. It's, hey, it's the perfect time to go ahead and drop. You know what I mean? Like this one, whole sixteen. Yeah. On this mix set right here, whole sixteen. They're going crazy over that. Whole mm-hmm. sixteen is about what? Three years. About three years old. That's what they say though. The best. You see songs what I'm saying? Like but that's what, and they up. love it. Like yeah. they're like, I'm like, cool. They keep talking about whole sixteen. Like, you know what I mean? So how you? Let me ask you a question. How you link up with uh, Swamp Izzo for Blood Brothers Two? Because the first one you had DJ Scream. I had right? Scream. So, you know, Swamp from Swamp from uh, Carolina. Okay. And um, I had already got a little background on Swamp. So when I actually got up with Scream, um, I had asked Scream about Swamp. And then he sent me over there to the flame. So I popped up on Swamp. I chopped it up with him. And he he really understand the, the Carolina struggle. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Because yeah. he looked me in my face and like, man, I would have never made it if I didn't get it out of Carolina. Yeah. And he said, but the grind from Carolina, because of the 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 the, the market for music is so tough, your grind, it's so many artists out there that are probably out grind half the people out here because yeah. they're trying so hard against a battle. Yeah. So he said by the time he came out here, it was easier for him to grind because he was used he to grinding so did hard, yeah. he didn't have to do it as hard as yeah. he had to do back in Carolina. Yeah. So people started noticing him more. So after I got over Scream, I called Scream. I told him, I said, I want to do it. I said, I need Swamp. You know what I mean? He was like, well, call him. You know what I mean? That's my brother. I called Swamp. He said, man, hell yeah, I got you. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and from oh. then on, it was, you know... Di- the love that them niggas kind of show to me is 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 some shit that you don't really see a lot for people. People take your money and they just take your money. Yeah, you know what I mean. But he they actually don't, yeah, like, invest. Yeah, scream or hit you like you know what I mean. What's up? What you got going on? I mean, you don't got my money now. Mixtape is already out. You don't have to hit me up yeah, and yeah. see how I'm doing. You don't have to hit me up to see what projects we got doing. You don't even have to hit me up to make sure we still working. Yeah. But that's the type of stuff they do. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I told them like I could have went to a bunch of other DJs. You know what I mean? But that relationship and that loyalty that you build with somebody, you might as well just go ahead and try to step it on up from there. You see what yeah, I'm saying? I see you. And, and And that's how, that's really how we met up with him. You know what I mean? Shout out to both of them. You know what I mean? Because we wouldn't be out here without him. Okay, let's just take it back for a second. Just describe growing up in Carolina. I don't understand all of the Carolina struggle, but I went to college in North Carolina. What college you went to? a Okay, well, so, it's a little, a and be jumping. Oh yeah, A&T. You know that's what I mean? A whole it's a whole nother, a whole that's a whole nother, nother that's a whole nother conversation. But I get it, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I mean, because so many people from... that's it though. Yeah. In the Carolinas, that's it. 
Yeah, it's A&T. a and is it. Like, that's the only thing that out of North Carolina, they probably even know what that is. You right, know what I mean? Right, right. And then you also know how hard it is to even get in that little market because they they mostly bring most of the big stars. Yeah. They're one of the schools that got the funding to bring all them big stars to even come out to their schools right, for their homecoming right. and stuff like or that. Or you take a step back like Charlotte. Like mm-hmm. Charlotte guys, I don't know, they just got a whole different swag up. What part of North Carolina? Fairville. Okay. from Fairville. Oh, okay. Yeah, y'all we're from, from Fairville. Y'all, y'all some, some street <laughs> niggas. <laughs> you know, and and kind of, and it was kind of, sort of. We try yeah. to stay, try to stray away from that, but that's how Fairville is. It's no, rough. Yes. It's like that. It's very, it's very, rough. It's, it's rough. Fairville is one of them rough towns, and um, and it's only like a couple of people out there that's even trying to put it Make on something. The, yeah, to they even, even get out to get out because yeah. people are just content. But the thing about me and bro is we're not from there. So when I right. when your mom and your dad and your auntie live up the street and your uncle there and everybody went to school together, of you're more comfortable you to, to stay. Right. But me and him, like, man, we trying to get out of here. Like, you yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah, and, I got you. and 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 that's not knocking to them, but you know, that's just where we at. And to be two people that's not from there and didn't no have no family there, like stuff like that. The support that we get from there is what kind of opened our eyes up. Yeah. Cause they're like taking over a place. Yeah. You know what I mean? That you really have no type of ties to. Whatever, however you might have to do it. You know what I mean? Because it wasn't easy. But at the end of the day, you still had to put your own two feet in the ground and say, hey, we here. Yeah. And we here to stay. Y'all going to recognize us. Y'all going to appreciate us. And we actually put in our, 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 our music and our money where our mouth is. So you have to respect it. I don't care how small the market is. I don't care about none of that. And if you don't, we'll just take the show on the road. Because right. at the end of the day, all you're going to do is come in at the back end and try to act like, you know what I mean? And you have to go along with it. You know yeah. how this is. We got to act like everything cool. But in my in my eyes, if it, it it's a lot that they could do. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I yeah. feel like it's a lot that can be done out there. And they have they don't really have nobody. You know, they got cold, but cold music is different from Fayetteville. If you really know Fayetteville, yeah. you'll know cold I hear music. That. I heard that a lot. Cold, like... cold music is different from Fayetteville artists. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So... So, for anyone who's never heard y'all music ever before and they stumbled across this interview, why should they get Blood Brothers 2? Because it's actually something different. And it's genuine. Yeah. It's genuine. If you if you believe in, in family, if you believe in, in the, the chemistry that me and this dude got in the, in the studio is completely out of this world. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you have to really be in tune to it. And I guarantee you, when you do get two... You're gonna go get one. <laughs> if and if two is the first one you got to hold up, you're gonna go get one. You're gonna go back, cause that's what it's gonna like. What did I miss? You know what I yeah. mean? I, I done missed some shit. Then if it, it, it got like six mixtapes out, right? You see what I'm saying? So it's like I don't, I don't, I had to mix some shit. Like you know what I mean? So that's all it's gonna make you do. It's gonna make you really listen. Put it like that. The beats are dope all day. But it's actually people saying stuff behind the beats to make you listen. You're actually to the point where you go, like, ooh, that's a great bar. Yeah. That was a hard bar. That shit was hard. Or like, like ooh, he got a story. Yeah, you thing. know what I mean? That yeah. It's a difference, you know what I mean? So that's all it would be. I would say the energy on Blood Brothers and the uniqueness of the two artists on there is what's going to make you say, you know what, I'm rocking with this shit. All right, Blood Brothers 2 is out on all streaming services, right? Mm-hmm. Apple Music, Tidal, Spotify. Spotify you can okay. hit the middle of your iPhone button and ask Siri for it, and she'll tell you exactly <laughs> where it's at. <laughs> and so, how can people reach out if they're trying to get in contact with you? At Yolo Rue Music on everything. At Coon Rue. You know at what I mean? Coon Rue. Uh-huh. You got to spell it. How you spell Coon? K-O-N. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's it. Dre Taylor, Streets 945.